What's up you guys, it's Ashing. welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing my best and worst of Catrice. These are kind of like new-ish good products and new-ish bad products. I say ish because I actually have no idea how long they've been out. I think I have like maybe one or two products in here that are kind of like on the market a lot, but I just had to throw them in because if you guys just stumble upon this video accidentally or just on your journeys around YouTube, then you need to know you need to get this product. So I'm gonna start off with an oldie but a goodie. And this is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. I kid you not guys, this is like one of the best drugstore foundations on the market, honestly. It is outstanding. Just incredible. I can't stress how much I love this. This used to come in like four shades or something, but I think they have since expanded the range, which I think is great. So it comes in a multitude of different shades. It has this dropper, which I am not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of it because you drop out the foundation. It's not like the worst. It's just not my favorite way to apply my foundation. So why I love this foundation so much is because it is like six or seven euro, something really inexpensive. And the coverage you get from this is unreal and it lasts all day on my skin as well as that it holds back my oils I have oily skin so this just makes my skin stay matte for longer and stops like my oils from coming through and like my foundation from wearing off and it just looks great on my skin it's really really fresh it's like my skin only better it adds like that extra layer of skin not layer that sounds really gross but you know what I mean it just looks like your skin is just glowing and radiant and like uniform it looks like your skin just just a better version of your skin. Really like this foundation, honestly recommend it. I think it's great, you won't regret it if you pick it up. The next things I absolutely adore are these Prime and Fine Makeup Transferring or Transferring? Transforming Drops. God, Ashton, you can't talk today. This is the first day I've actually filmed in like maybe a week and I just, I've, I've lost like my mojo, can't talk, don't know what I'm saying. So basically what these are is a lightening and a darkening drop and they're to lighten and darken your foundation. So obviously this is the darkening, this is the lightening. What they basically do is they transform your foundation. If your foundation is a little bit too deep, then you would obviously add in the lightening drop. If it is too light, you would add in the darkening drop. Now, I understand that this is obviously the darkest shade it comes in. So if your skin tone is deeper than this, then you're gonna have a little bit of bother and obviously if your skin tone is paler than this again you're going to have just a little bit of bother because that's as light as it goes if that makes any sense but in general as lightening and darkening drops go I think they're pretty good you can get white lightening drops from different brands these are obviously not like white and then you can also get like really really deep ones from other brands also so there are other alternatives on the market but I just think for me personally, these are some of the best lightening and darkening drops ever. Why? Because they don't change the consistency of my foundation. They don't change the formula. They don't alter the color where it's like that grayish kind of color. It's like, like you almost look like you're kind of gray beige. Not loving that at all. And that's why I hated the Body Shop darkening and lightening drops. I hated them. They just made my foundation look grayish. Basically. They don't do that to my foundation and they're just brilliant for the summertime um, when you buy a foundation and maybe it's just a teeny bit light and you get a bit more tanned in the summer then you can darken it up and then again the same foundation you could lighten it up in the winter time. It's just great. I really 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 like these. I love the consistency of them and again they're really inexpensive because they're from Catrice. This mascara is by no means a new product. I've talked about this like, till the cows come home here on my channel. I absolutely adore this mascara. This is the Rocketure mascara and the wand looks like this on it. This is actually all gone. I need a new one. So it has like really short bristles on it which just means I can get right down to the root of my lash and like separate my lashes up and it just flares my lashes out. I recently tried the Glam and Doll mascara which I do like I really do like it but I still think that this Rocketure one is way better I just prefer the formula I prefer the way it makes my lashes look and I just prefer the way they look like separated and more full and I just I prefer this as a mascara to the Glam and Doll one so if your lashes are not what they could be you would probably benefit from this mascara because I know I do it like like I said, it gives me lashes for days. I just look like I actually have eyelashes when I use this. I wanna talk about some brow products next. So the first one I wanna talk about is the Slimatic Ultra Precise Pencil. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before in a video. If I have, I'm mentioning it again. And if not, there you go. You're making your debut. This is one of my favorite eyebrow pencils from the drugstore because it's just amazing at what it does. It makes my brows stay on all day. They don't fade or become patchy or anything like that. It is a really great brow product. 
only issue I have with this is how fast I actually go through the product. The product isn't like overly creamy or anything like that. It's actually just like the perfect consistency, kind of like the Precisely My Brow from Benefit. So it's just that same consistency, but for whatever reason, this just wears down a lot quicker. Now it's only about two or three euros, so it's not like breaking the bank. But still, I would definitely go through this every two, two and a half weeks, depending on how regularly I fill in my brows, but mostly like two to three, two to three weeks I would be repurchasing another one so it does kind of use up pretty quick but it is a great brow product for an affordable brand. The other product that I really like is their brow colorist. It comes in a tube like this quite similar to the Gimme Brow. It has a tiny little mascara wand perfect for getting right onto the brows and it just like fills in your brows adds a bit of color and then it also sets your brows in place. I really like this product. This is new out for them and I actually love it. I think it's great if you're looking for a new eyebrow setting product and it's from Catrice so you know it's affordable. Next up from Catrice is their matte and fine anti-shine fixing spray. I adore this. I think it's a really 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 great fixing spray. I find that it's hard to get good fixing sprays from the drugstore. They just don't seem to do anything. It's like spraying water onto your face. They're like what is the point? Whereas this actually does work and I think it's really great. It's fixing and setting your face makeup. I use this on nights out like if I'm going on a night out and I'll do my makeup and I'll set my face with this or the Essence one but obviously we're talking about Catrice here. So this is definitely one of my up there must purchase products from Catrice and if you haven't tried it definitely do. Actually I never set my face today so let's give it a bit of a spritz. I like that the mister is quite fine in it as well and it just sets my makeup in place for hours. This is for a matte finish. They also have like a dewy finish one as well just if you would prefer that if you have a drier skin the dewy finish one might suit you a bit better. If you're like me and you're oily then the matte finish would be what I would recommend. I talked about this in one of my last videos like a drugstore video I can't remember what one but I mentioned the Catrice one minute face perfector in it. I absolutely adore this guys. It's a new product from Catrice and when I initially like started using it I was like what is this is it a foundation is it a primer what is it I actually use this as a primer so that's what it looks like you apply it onto the skin so it adds a bit like of color to the skin it's really really matte so if you have like drier skin you might not like the consistency of this so it's quite matte and it sits on the skin but it is so soft on the skin like I cannot explain how soft this is so it just like fills in all of your pores evens out your complexion just makes your skin look incredible and then if you did want to put foundation on top of it you can now I have used this on its own as like a foundation and it lasted all day I did a wear test on it again I'll link that down below if you want to see it it lasted all day on my skin it looked great but if you wanted to use it as a primer, it's great at filling in pores and evening out the complexion and just kind of making your skin a little bit more uniform. If your skin is pretty flawless to start with, then this would be a great foundation for lighter coverage. But if you're looking for something like medium to fuller coverage, this is not what I would recommend as a foundation, but definitely as a primer, just to kind of add a layer onto the skin before you put on your foundation. It says that it's one fits all. Again, like I don't really agree with it. I feel like if you're my skin tone, you'll be fine. But if you're a bit lighter, a bit deeper, you may have a bit of an issue just getting it to match the skin. But you could put it on and then put your foundation on. You wouldn't even be able to see this. Cause like it kind of almost doesn't, it doesn't disappear into the skin because you can definitely see that it's there. But it's like it, like it tears to the skin a little bit better. I didn't find a change in color or anything like that. You know, if you have lighter or darker skin and you do try this and it changed color on you, do let me know because it is like a one fit all product. It's supposed to match your skin tone or like adhere to your skin tone. But I really like it as a primer. I just think it fills in my pores and makes my skin look amaze balls and I highly recommend it. The next thing I want to talk about is the liquid metal long lasting cream eyeshadows. So many brands have brought these out since the Steel and Magnificent Metal and they're trying to like dupe them and come out with like their own spin on them but I actually find that these are one of my favourite like metal eyeshadows or like liquid eyeshadows from the drugstore. They look like this. This shade is, I think this is called, oh yeah, Daily Dose of Rose. I also have like a gold shade. I have a few of them actually. I just really like the consistency of it. I really like the color of it. And I really, really like it on the eyes. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I use this sometimes just in the center portion of my eyes. Kind of like what I did today with a halo look. 
and you just kind of pop it in there or sometimes I'll just go in with like a brown crease and then like apply this all over the lid I just really like it it doesn't crack or crease on me it comes in tons of different shades I just wish that it came in like a little bit more of a unique variety of shades because it comes in a lot of neutral tones and kind of like rosy tones and gold tones whereas I'd love like a bright blue or like a bright green or something and it's just me putting my two cents into it it is a really really good liquid metal eyeshadow and again totally inexpensive I've definitely talked about this before in multiple videos this is the prime and fine contouring palette I'm not gonna like talk too much about it right now but it is one of my favorite contouring palettes it comes in a multitude of different shades as well I think I have warm honey or no sorry warm harmony I just really like the consistency of the powder it's quite creamy and it blends very easily onto the skin so you've obviously like the lighter and the darker I use one for bronzing or one for contouring rather and one for setting my under eye area and it's just a really finely milled powder it's not powdery on the skin and it's not doesn't leave like streaks or lines or marks or anything like that it's actually a really good consistency powder and if you haven't tried it I recommend picking it up just for contouring purposes it's quite handy as well I have the one from Wet n Wild, Dulce de Leche. It's a big, massive, round bronzing product. So it's not as convenient as something like this. And I just think this is great for bronzing and contouring the skin. So my second last favorite Catrice product has got to be their new lip glosses. These are unbelievable. They're like my favorite lip glosses I've tried in ages. They're just so silky soft on the lips. And they're, they're not overly sticky. I describe them as like the MAC lip glasses so if you don't like MAC lip gloss formula then you may not like this it's slightly sticky but it's not like to where your hair has been like reefed out your head it's just a really nice consistency and so pigmented so that's what it looks like there there is a lot of pigmentation from these lip glosses I need to pick up more the shade I have here is nude sapphire and I just wear this constantly. If I was doing like a no makeup makeup day, I would literally line my lips quite lightly and then like apply this on it and it just gives you a gorgeous like full pouty lip. And it's just, it's a really nice lip gloss. So I do recommend their lip glosses. If you're at a Catrice counter, definitely pick up a few to see what you think. You don't need to take my word for it. Just try it yourself and you'll be convinced. The last product I wanna talk about is the Glow Illusion Loose Powder. I have major issues with the packaging of this. I mentioned this in like my most disappointing video, disappointing products. It is disappointing to me. It annoys me so much by listening to me going up and around. It's because the little sifter in it is just ridiculous. The holes are tiny. So getting the product out means you have to like literally beat the crap out of it and like put it into the lid and it's just so time consuming time consuming but the powder itself is amazing now I haven't taken the sifter out yet because you guys did give me loads of recommendations in that video to put it into like different containers and stuff like that so I'm one million percent going to do that because I think this powder is so good it's a translucent pa translucent powder but it has like a radiance effect so it basically makes your skin look like it's glowing which is what we all want I know we want to like set our makeup and stuff but I also want to make my skin look like it's glowing and not flat and matte and just with no life in it. And that's what this does. It just kind of gives my skin like a radiant appearance. It's a gorgeous powder. Just do be wary of the packaging. It sucks. I don't need to stress that anymore about the packaging. You guys get my drift. But it's a fantastic powder. So it's just a shame the packaging is not great. But the powder inside love it so i want to talk about a few of catrice's worst products and like they're not technically like the worst things i've ever tried they're just disappointing and they're things that i would overlook if i was at the stand and i would just say don't don't bother don't even go there you're just not gonna love it maybe you will i don't know maybe you guys do love it but it's just my recommendations and things that i didn't get on with and the first thing is their brand new mascara this is their glam and doll boost lash growth volume mascara no this no no oh don't like the wand in it it's really teeny teeny tiny it does not give my lashes any lift at all so again if you have really beautiful long lashes you might not mind this mascara but for me my lashes are just not there and this mascara just it didn't <laughs> didn't do anything for the lack of lashes that I have it just made them look like they were flat and no I just didn't think it was a great mascara the 
lash growth volume in it. Like it's supposed to have a serum in it to make your lashes grow. I didn't notice anything. I used it for maybe about three weeks straight and just got infuriated with it because I was testing it. I just wanted to see like, is it really that bad? I just didn't like it. So no, that would be a worst Catrice product for me. I just wasn't feeling it. The next one is their Golden Dust Highlighter. I'm really sad about this because I thought that I'd actually quite like this. I tried it in a one brand tutorial and it is a lovely highlighter, but I have multiple reasons why I don't like this. The dropper for one. Yeah, so the dropper on it is just not ideal. It just gets, the product gets stuck in it and then it like shoots out. And also the hi highlighter, like it's not very highlighting. So once you obviously apply this over your foundation because that's the way you would do it and then you would set your face, it looks lovely but once you put powder on it, it disappears. Now I know what you're saying, it's a liquid product but I have liquid products from Essence that don't do that. Once I set the face, they're still you're still able to see the liquid highlighter over my translucent powder. This just doesn't really do anything. You can kind of see it there, like it is glowy on the skin. I've tried mixing it in with foundation. I definitely don't like it like that because I just think it's like too gold and just makes my face look shimmery. And then applying it as a highlighter it disappears once I set the face. So yeah, it just lacks pigmentation a little bit. It lacks that intensity that I want from a highlighter but not crazy about it myself personally like it's just not really anything to be fair I might try it in the summer months maybe just on like my decolletage or on my shoulder blades or something to add a little bit of highlight to my skin but other than that I don't really have much use for this product I hate mentioning their eyeshadows because they're so inexpensive but their eye this particular eyeshadow I've talked about before so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it but it is the eyeshadow in blue bouton and I mentioned it in a disappointing video I think that was probably like not my previous video like the video before that and I just mentioned like how it has like no pigmentation like you can see that there if I dig my finger into it I do get a bit of pigmentation off it but just ugh, it's just not worth it it really isn't that's the eyeshadow there I don't even know if you guys can see that let's try and build it up there's just a very little intensity from it it's three to four euro this eyeshadow so it's not crazy expensive but someone did allude to the fact that Jeffree Star's eyeshadows break down to roughly around that same price I know they come in like a 50 euro palette but if you take I the eyeshadow individually it's roughly around the same price so you know that's kind of saying a lot and also I do find that the Makeup Revolution palette they've loads of different palettes and loads of them have blue eyeshadows in it and they're just much better pigmentation wise same with the palette this eyeshadow palette I liked it I really did when I used it in my tutorial like I just want to say go get this like it's the best eyeshadow palette ever this is about I think five or six euro if you have five or six euro going spare I would say don't buy it <laughs> instead get something from make revolution like from their eyeshadows they're much better or from Essence Essence recently brought out these eyeshadow palettes that look like that on the inside this is the good day Sydney and then hello New York <laughs> which looks like that much better eyeshadow palettes and they're for the exact same price as this one and I just prefer the pigmentation on them this is not a great eyeshadow palette and not something I would rush out and buy again it looked lovely the day I used it it really did but just in general it's not something I've dipped into since and I probably won't use it ever again the final product I do not like is their new concealers I still consider this to be like one of their worst products I don't like the HD concealer either I've ranted about that before in previous videos you guys know my feelings on it I just think it's not really up to scratch I know it's some people's favorite product ever for me I just don't like it one of my subscribers did say that if I tried a different shade I have an itchy back <laughs> one of my subscribers has it in a different shade like I was trying the lighter shades and she said it's kind of like a peachy undertone and to try it out seemingly the consistency of that is different to the other concealers from the HD collection so I don't know I might do that and try it and see if I like that one any better but in general I'm just not crazy about it same for this one drop coverage weightless concealer I just feel like this is such an effort and a half you have to like squeeze the product out and then drop it on the back of your hand or on your finger or whatever and like apply it under there and then blend it out it's an all right concealer. Like I wouldn't be rushing out to buy it again. It looks like it's great coverage there, but it's just once I put it under the eye, it kind of like disappears and then it will sink into like fine lines and stuff. I don't like the appearance of this underneath my eyes. I don't like the way it creases on me. I'm not really keen on how high maintenance it is either. 
and I just think there's better concealers out there for more affordable brands that I would uh, pass on this one. But if you've tried it and love it, continue to love it. Guys, they are my best and worst of Catrice, kind of like their new products. There are some I just had to mention, just in case, like I said, you hadn't ever tried anything from Catrice before. Every time my battery dies, I am mid-sentence. Anyway, what was I saying? There are a certain amount of products from Catrice that you just have to try, and I've talked about them before in other videos, but I, like I said, if you've never tried anything from Catrice, you just needed to know about some of them. And some of them are new, like I said. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this throwback to best and worst. I used to do this all the time. I used to do my best and worst from like a multitude of different brands or like best and worst blushes, best and worst like foundation, stuff like that. And I wanna bring this series back just like I brought the one brand tutorials back because I miss doing those type of videos. So if that is something you would like to see, then let me know what brand you would like to see next. I probably will do Essence. I'll stick with my affordable ones first and then maybe we'll go into MAC and stuff like that. So do let me know what you would like to see next in regards to that. Don't forget if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and most importantly, the bell notification because you will not get notified otherwise. So many people have said, wow, I didn't even know you were consistently uploading because I haven't seen your videos in ages. Yeah, YouTube's doing that so I don't know, it's affecting all of us creators and um, the algorithms just like that. But look, it is what it is. If you want to get notified about my videos, you have to click the bell. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Mwah. Bye guys.